March 26, 2024 meeting of the External Relations Committee. Would you please rise and join me in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Rebecca, would you please identify the um, board members here? Director Cicada? Yes, I'm here. Director Thomas? I am also here. Okay, um, moving on to uh, public comment. Do we have any public comment today from those in the building or online? Hello, Francisco. Good afternoon, Good afternoon. and uh, welcome, I guess. Um, one of the interactions that I had with Rebecca via email was um, a change that I thought was the case, and she corrected my understanding. But I wanted to bring it up to the full committee so that we all understood what page I was trying to go on. Um, <clears throat> this could have been possibly linked uh, and made part of the agenda packet. I don't know what Kelly is going to present, but um, since we have now changed somewhat the role of the External Affairs Committee to being the primary entry point of uh, public suggestions or uh, recommendations or the external affairs links, the metrics, the whole project is now channeled through the External Affairs Committee. And if we're going to do work, it would be helpful to have, similar to the engineering committee, whatever is going to be discussed be made available as early as it can be made available. And I misinterpreted, I guess, or misunderstood. Uh, so when I emailed Rebecca, I said, hey, is there a change? Uh, none of the new business items have any material in the packet. And it makes it hard to prepare as a member of the public when the first time you see something is when it's presented here. It's going to maybe make the meetings go a little different than if we'd have gotten this earlier. So I'm making that suggestion or recommendation that since we're changing the role and the function and how the External Affairs Committee is interacting with what we're trying to do as members of the advisory group, I'm asking that material that's going to be presented be made available similarly to how it's made available in the other committee meetings so that we can digest it along with you all. Okay. okay. Francesca, can I ask a question on this advisory group? Yep. Um, has that group invited Michael or anybody to that meeting to talk with everybody other than just you folks? No. Curious. Uh, no. Any what, we try, what we try to do with the advisory group is keep it small because uh, when you invite 30 or 40 people, it becomes a little difficult to have meaningful work actions. And we didn't know which way this was going to go. We didn't know what was going to work, what wasn't going to work. We didn't know how collaborative you all were going to be. And we didn't know what we'd be able to accomplish. We have some direction. We have some uh, goals we'd like to achieve. Uh, we've been stymied, uh, to be honest, in terms of getting anywhere, in terms of having uh, regularly reported out metrics or regularly reported out performance things. Maybe Michael will get into it in, in his presentation, but here we are, March, six months after September. Uh, we still don't know how stuff is being managed. Yeah. So, you know, this is really the first time in the public that I've heard you say this advisory committee. Sure. So I was just kind of curious if there's only a few of you, um, do you meet at any point with other people to come up with what you want to see get done here? I'm to be honest, um, lack of success in even us being as reasonable as we think we've been and as collaborative as we've tried to be, it becomes very, very frustrating to find that despite, uh, oh, welcome the public comment, oh, it's good to hear from you, et cetera, We've not meaningfully moved the needle except in one direction. And 
that direction is represented by that gentleman. It's represented by this packet. These didn't exist before we started making a lot of noise. OK, but although it's good that you're getting this out there, we still don't know and we can't tell how you all can make the decisions that you make without any of the metrics that we've been asking about. Maybe they're provided in another way. Maybe you understand things differently because you've been doing it for so long. But from a statistical analysis perspective, from a performance improvement, from a quality assurance, from all of the trainings that I've received in terms of how to get an organization moving in a particular direction, if you don't measure, any destination will do. And that's what's happened in this case. We are where we are, but we don't know how we got here. And we don't know if we're making progress to getting better. And I think Mike Rogers has kept asking and asking, how are we getting better? Are we getting better? Are we making a difference? And if we can't point to where we were with any meaningful data, what are we going to point to when we say we're getting better? That's why it's a little disconcerting to get all of this stuff uh, about meeting objectives on your strategic plan when there's no measurements. It's all words and trust me and believe me and yes. No, thank you for that. I, I want some clarity. I got it. Thank you. Hey, uh, anyone else? <clears throat> no hands raised. Um, we have a, a new face in the room today. I'd like to acknowledge the uh, presence of John Coleman. Um, Hi, John. Um, why, don't, why don't you come up and uh, let us interrogate you for for a minute. What are you doing? What are, what do you plan on doing? <laughs> I've been in interrogation, so hopefully this is not a bad one. No, I I just really wanted to express publicly my appreciation for the fact that you're here, John. And uh, frankly, I'm surprised that after last week that you you came back. So I debated. <laughs> it, it, no. it was a it was a, a slim. Uh, slim choice, sir. But uh, you know, I welcome again. And uh, anyway, are you from this area originally? Um, kind of well, actually, my family comes back, goes to this area in the 1850s when Dry Creek was part of Calaveras County. I have relatives that were buried there, buried there in the early 1850s. Wow. And we had a family camp at uh, Ford's Crossing. Wow. Ford's um, Crossing. And then uh, I've had a house in Arnold for about eight years now. So my heart's always been here. Gotcha. And now I have the opportunity, thanks to Michael and the board, to be up here working for all for all of you, with mm -hmm. all of you. It's going to be great. Nice. Thank you. Okay. Um, in, in ter interrogation is over. Cool. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you have a question, Francisco? I, oh, it's Coleman. So, Coleman Stowe. Coleman. Golden, yeah. Um, I I saw recently um, <laughs> a, like a chronological listing of the accomplishments of John Coleman, and up until time up until I read that, I was pretty proud of my performance as a, you know my professional life and stuff. But I I have I'm a hiker, a, a very, barely a beginner compared to this guy. So, and you know, we were very lucky to have you, John. OK, uh, next item here is uh, approval of the minutes. Um, I just want to make a comment. Um, I was online looking at the um, the board package and stuff, and it was really cool that, you know, like Kelly's presentation was linked there. Mm -hmm. um, and also in the minutes, you have links in there that I think are really pretty cool. Saves a lot of time. I think so. Thank you. It looks really good. And I'll, um, I'm okay with the minutes as presented. Okay. Um, and I'll second that. And all in favor say aye. Did, aye. Did aye. you see those links in there? Did you guys notice that public? When you looked at the when you looked at the agenda package, there's minutes in there, and it gives you the link to um, the updates. You know, so like um, 
customer service, you can click on that and um, takes you right to um, the part in the meeting where we were discussing and it's really pretty cool and saves a lot of time. So that's nice. It looks good. Yep. Okay. And so we have approval of, of the minutes. Uh, going on to item four, new business for a customer service update. And we have Ms. Richards. Good afternoon. Good to see you both. I am presenting our customer service update this afternoon. Um, not too robust, just a few updates that aren't outside of our, our usual, but uh, in keeping with consistency on a lot of the important things customer service is taking care of. Um, I will start with our call queues, emails, and work orders. So as you can see, um, adding our most recent, recently completed month of February onto that graph, and um, really just trying to explain um, and tell a story here for customer service, specifically in looking at where we've been and where we are now, and that will help us gauge where we're going. And so um, you'll see here kind of historically um, our emails, work orders, and call trends since May of this year. And um, since the last meeting, I did add a couple of new data points um, because for customer service, it's very important to us that we elevate our customer experience as best we can with the staff that we have and the time that we have. So what I'm illustrating here for the committee is that, you know, we went through a period of um, being full staff, fully staffed, and then we lost a staff person, and now we are back to being fully staffed in customer service. And, and so how many is that? We have a senior customer service representative and two customer service reps, um, and currently both of them are a level one, um, but they can go from level one to level three. Um, so basically, between those three ladies in the office, they've been able to actually increase our um, percentage of calls answered uh, for the first uh, time that the customer calls in from 58% to 71%. So I think that's a great reflection of um, some changes made in customer service and our effectiveness in taking care of the customers um, a little bit better since we have the bodies in the office that we need. Um, but you can see on that graph there that it really is kind of showing where we were and then the effect of being down a staff person and, and what that did to our call handling. And then now we're rebounding. So I look forward to keep reporting on stats like this because these are meaningful and these do show where we've been, like I said, and where we are now and um, really give us a, an idea of, you know, setting a goal and where we'd like to go. So for this, um, I will keep reporting on and showing hopefully our, our increased trend there. A uh, decreased trend though is uh, the percentage of calls that are going to voicemail. So obviously kind of a, a reflection as well as being fully staffed in the office. Our number of calls going to voicemail has decreased from 19% to 13%. So I'm very, very proud of the staff in there. Um, they've really stepped it up. Our new CSR is is onboarding and doing work very, very well at her level. So um, I think that's a great reflection of, you know, the teamwork in there and then us consistently having conversations about, you know, goals and, um, you know, making sure that we take care of our customers first and foremost. So did just want to report on those. Um, wanted to move forward with um, customer portal update. So, I ask, yes, 
Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm looking at the work orders and those are the, are those are inbound calls and you guys create a work order. Is that how that happens? Yes. So work orders can be a result of inquiries coming in from the customer. They can be resulting from um, e email inquiries as well. And then we also create work orders for our field staff to go out and um grab reads for us off of meters that are not reporting onto the network or to troubleshoot meters. So um, you yourself would create that work order. Yes. And so we coordinate. Okay. Yeah. So operations actually is able to do that as well. But a lot of times um, kind of a byproduct of the billing process that we do is that we notice there's something askew with some Can meters. Like print a report or, or bring up a right. report that says, hey, these guys weren't red or whatever correct okay. yes and we do that every billing every billing cycle how many would you say you get of those each one? you know it depends cycle. it really depends because um i would say uh roughly the ones that we have to troubleshoot um maybe a handful or two okay and is that you think that's due because of weather or well, what would be a cause maybe they wouldn't be red Right. So a lot of times there could be damage to the node, which is the communication device inside the, the box. So maybe, you know, gophers got in and chewed the wire. Somebody, you know, took their meter box lid off too quickly and disconnected the wire. And so, you know, there it needs to be reconnected or or so a handful sometimes replaced. Hit. What's that? Yeah. It, yeah. And out of how many? Oh, 6, thousands, thousand. six yeah. thousand to seven thousand. Yeah. So um, we're making a lot of progress there, and you know, just kind of don't want to go too far off on a tangent, but a lot of a lot of productivity and addressing of issues now because we're getting into the swing of things mm -hmm. with AMI and kind of timelines associated mm -hmm. with getting the billing out. So um, you know, again, just kudos to operations and customer service and our finance team as well. Everybody's really working together to try to fix these issues out in the field. Now it can fluctuate depending on weather or if we're having an issue um, with the network. Um, but I think we're finding ways and methods and communication alerts in the system um, where we can address these concerns early enough that it will not impact so the billing schedule. My overall thinking, I'm thinking of how this could be a good benefit for outside staff to be able to go and monitor these repairs or issues. Mm -hmm. So when you get something like this and the work order goes out, is it somehow linked to that account that says uh, uh, the node was chewed or it was weather or something else? And so maybe a year from now, you can pull a report and you can say, man, that keeps happening on that one, right? I mean, is that kind of how you could potentially use this information? Right. So we're that's what we utilize mobile MMS for in the CMMS system is to track that work. Um, but, you know, anytime we get a call from a customer, if it's something that we're finding during billing, we initiate that out of the billing system, out of Tyler. And so that service order, which is what it is when we initiated on our side, communicates directly with mobile MMS where a work order is created. Mm -hmm. And then a, once they complete the work order, it prompts us in customer service and we complete it in customer service. So there's a total feedback loop that occurs there. But tracking it too for when you're starting to see somebody that are darn wires are being chewed all the time, right? you know, you come up with another solution. And I can, you know. I'll cover that in greater detail okay. in my presentation. I won't steal your thunder. <laughs> <laughs> um, so again, just a lot of progress being made there and a lot of collaboration and, you know, troubleshooting. And so, um, you know, really proud of, of the staff and the efforts that they're putting in to resolve this and ultimately get us to a better place and more efficient place as far as those processes are concerned. I noticed that you have um, a four minute average handle time. Mm -hmm. That seems pretty low to me for a phone call, which is good. Or right. would you like to see it lower? And you know, I mean, what is that average? I, I meaning, think what is the an acceptable I think time? I think what's important with 
and why I track this is because it kind of correlates to the types of inquiries that we're getting. So if a majority of our inquiries that we're getting in from customers are simply to process a payment and nothing else, those are very quick. Um, and But if they're calling for more detailed purposes, they have questions about their bill. Um, they are wondering what their consumption is, or we have you know quite a few people that are on the portal now and they're calling in and they're asking questions about the portal and trying to understand understand it. So those lead to a little bit lengthier phone calls. Um, and, and a lot of our calls over the last month have been focused on the portal and on billing questions. And so those tend to be a little bit longer, but I think for our CSRs, managing them and keeping the average call below four minutes is still Good. amazing. I think and, it is, and I right. like seeing that. Right. Um, and then looking at under common inquiries for February, you know, the side and customer side leaks concerns, those were the predominantly the most calls for this month that Correct. we're talking about. Correct. Mm -hmm. Rate study, cost of service inquiries. Is there any way for those three items you could say, you know, the leaks concerns were, you know, 80%? Can you put sure. a percentage to that? Mm -hmm. I, I think that might be kind of cool to see. Okay. If you can easily enough, if not, um, you know, so the rate study was only 3%. That would be kind of cool. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just No, that. we could definitely do that. That could be a tool for us to say, oh, man, you know, because we're having so many leaks calls, maybe we need to focus on putting something out in a blast to tell people something about leaks. Right. right? Right. And, you know, a lot of and you're absolutely right. We should we should be taking, um, you know, the engaging with the customer and and kind of, you know, targeting our outreach to meet what they're calling us for and what yeah. they're inquiring about. So right. yeah, good those are those are absolutely things that we track and we work very closely with Kelly um, to figure out, you know, the most effective information to share and who, and you know, that it's very applicable to who, to our customer well, base. I'm hoping like in these committees that perhaps when it's time for do to do a survey that we as a group can, um, you know, come up with what survey we want to do, what type of survey and seeing these kinds of things would help you determine you know, what kind of a survey or right. whatever. Okay. Yes, absolutely. And so can, can you hold hold your make a note of your questions and, and after she concludes her report, then we can dive back in, please. So in moving forward to the customer portal, um, just wanted to report that obviously we have since last month, 94 new um, members who have added in. And again, um, in prior communication that we've had at this particular committee where uh, we've asked um, if we can drill down further and determine how many of those are you know, primary and singular account holders and not duplicates of the same account where we would have maybe a landlord and tenant that have added. I'm working with Tyler right now to develop a report on the back end that would be able to uh, monitor that and actually produce uh, um, data on that. So more to come there as soon as they're able to help build that on their side. But uh, very productive as far as uh, portal engagement. And we've had some inquiries, quite honestly, over the past couple of weeks of customers calling in, asking about the data that they're seeing um, on the portal. And I've had to stay very engaged with Tyler over the last couple of weeks. Uh, to try to remedy some discrepancies and bugs that are occurring from that data transfer between Mueller, um, which is our AMI folks, and Tyler. And so um, they are working on their end to try to figure out where these discrepancies are originating. And so we've only gotten a handful of calls um, from customers saying that something is not jiving as far as their consumption is concerned. Now, what we have been able to validate is obviously when we bill our customers, we're using the raw data from the AMI system. We're not using, you know, the portal data to bill the customers. So we've been able to vet that uh, the billing that the customers is uh, that they're receiving is accurate and correct. 
Um, it's just that the data that's being reported on the portal that the customers would otherwise go to to see their consumptions, something's askew. So uh, I'm working, like I said, with Tyler. Um, we're providing them with information, we're working on specific accounts, and I hope to have a remedy here on that shortly. I did just want to be transparent about that. Well, it's moving along nicely, it seems like, since you went live, so that's a good thing. Yes, we've had quite a few people, and I'm able to go in actually on the back end, and now our CSRs are able to as well. We have a um, administrator like back end that we're able to go in and actually see campaigns that have gone out for leak alerts. We're able to see folks that have received phone calls and texts and emails. And so we are engaging. And, and um, obviously I think once we're able to get through a couple of these, you know, discrepancy issues that we're facing with Tyler, we really look forward to, again, kind of, having that that major outreach element that happens where we can really start bolstering the communication and the efforts to get folks utilizing these new features on on the on the site on on your report you know under the members and stuff mm -hmm. what is the um current online representing i don't Okay, so at the time that I pull the data, oh, that's, that's how many, how many people, people are currently okay. online, right? So, okay. uh, for example, I pulled that screenshot, you know, yesterday at four o'clock. So that's yeah. how many people were actually does on does the portal at the that time. Portal tell you um, like how many people accessed it during a day or any kind of a time frame. So that is part of the analytics report that Tyler's working on okay. with me. Because that um, would be really nice. Right. So it's it's going to provide quite a bit of information, um, but it, we have to make sure that it's that it's meaningful. I don't want right. them to build something that we're not ultimately going to use, you know, right. for tracking purposes. So. Um, we look forward to getting that finished product, and then I should be able to go in and actually pull that whenever. Is uh, we talked about a tutorial a mm -hmm. couple meetings ago or whatever? Is that online for the uh, customer yet? Uh, not yet, set? not yet. And so that's part of what we're looking at pushing out here once we're able to resolve some of these some of these just data discrepancy issues. Um, but we we're in constant communication with Kelly um, on kind of what our goals are for assisting the customers and methods of communication and assistance in order to get everybody up and rolling on the portal, you know, coming up with various ideas and and um, really communicating in several different ways. So that's that's going to, in my opinion, be kind of some of the fun part of yeah. of the process. So. And then finally, I did just want to provide the committee with an update on our customer assistance. Um, last week, we did report on the customer assistance program at the finance committee meeting. And so we'll be doing some extra work in regards to our program internally and maybe what that will look like moving forward. So more to come there. Um, but I did just want to report that we still at this time have 31 um, open spots, I believe, for water assistance and 62 open spots for wastewater. So still just, you know, having lower than uh, lower numbers than we'd like to see um, as far as enrollment is concerned. Are we going to be bringing that particular subject to the board as we're doing that tomorrow? I I've got some comments on that. Okay. No, we'll be bringing it back, I think, next, next to the next meeting. finance committee yeah. meeting and talking about maybe what that program could look like moving forward. And then, um, you know, we it's actually perfect timing to be having these conversations because we're starting program renewals here in April. Yeah. And so if we can come up with a way that we, it would engage customers, I think a little bit more um, moving forward, I think the the program will will obviously be able to reach more. Yeah, of our customers and get need. to that real soon, making those adjustments. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're working on that now. Um, if I can jump in here for a second, uh, uh, Michael and and John and I went to a, a meeting uh, last Tuesday, uh, board uh, or the Association of Realtors, and this uh, customer assistance program came up, mm -hmm. and the fact that the one of the uh, the ways that that we approve somebody going into it as being on this pg and e system mm -hmm. but one lady brought up the fact that um, 
uh, somebody in her family, an elderly person, um, has a, a, a live-in caregiver, mm-hmm. and so PG&E has combined the income yeah. for the for the resident and for the caregiver, and it it just makes the, the, their income household income too high to be in that program right and uh, michael you said that you had talked to or going to talk to atka about yeah the, and that actually came up immediately after that meeting when john uh, and i came to finance committee and mike castro shared a story about that as well so yeah that that discussion um is, is ongoing <laughs> we've talked about it at the staff level about reaching out to other organizations that are involved and in seeing if there's without us having to get into income verification, if there are other ways that we can provide or that we can provide eligibility to our cap without, um, uh, other than the PG&E program. Right. So that's a, that's a part of the, in, the work that we're doing right now to try to see if there's an element or elements of the program that may need to be restructured or reevaluated because of changes to eligibility. Well, the, there was another, I don't know, measuring device threshold that talked about whether their uh, account was current. Uh, right. And that's that's also what we're looking at as well. Back that's to what yes, in exactly. Sometime. Okay. Right. Yeah. I, that's something that I'd really like to see get done sooner than later. And it sounds like you guys are planning that. Yeah. So we we have quite a quite a few things that we're looking through as far as the the policy is concerned and just making sure that our program is effective and that it's reaching as many people as possible so yeah. that's that's well, what we're doing we now we have the extra we have room and right fill them up right so that's part of the evaluation process that's happening now but we are still getting applications in and we're processing them people are still entering into the program so i mean every month that i've reported on this we have had an increase in applications and and qualified customers that were able to assist uh we're just you know not at that that <laughs> cap space not yet. we're not capped yes. in cap so well, we'll um, get there yes so <laughs> that's the goal um and then just an update on liwap so liwap is coming to an end uh, at the end of this month here and originally the deadline to submit applications was established um, to be march 20th but because they still have for calaveras county a little over four thousand dollars left allocated um adka went back and said realistically you know what's the absolute latest that we can receive applications through and still be able you know before the deadline and so they extended the application deadline to march 28th so again we are speaking with customers regularly, encouraging them to get their applications in. Yeah, and we've, we've been doing that quite a bit. Um, and so hopefully we can have some some additional customers taking advantage of that. Just in the last month, though, um, the, the amount that LIWAP has been able to assist our customers has gone up by just under $8,000. So uh, 73 of our customers have been able to you know, benefit from the LIWAP program assistance through ATCA. Um, and so we're we're very proud of that you partnership. Think they're kinda, the customers are spread throughout the district or is there one district more than the other that has them? You don't have to tell me which one. I'm just kind of curious if that shows. Um, you know, that would be an interesting thing I'm to look at. I, I haven't really in, in all the processing that we've done, I haven't necessarily broken it down by, you know, route or area, but that might be an interesting statistic it's, to look at. Um, irrelevant, but interesting. Right. Maybe. Well, and, and you do have to consider Calaveras County is not just our agency. It's all water agencies that are partnered with mm-hmm. ADCA in Calaveras County. Gotcha. So I think um, without you know, uh, not wanting to speak out of turn, but I think we've been very successful yeah. in in our partnership with them and assisting uh, quite a few of our customers. So I'm I'm very yeah, proud of that helps. effort. And I would just point out real quick. So this is the end of LIWAP again, because it's not the first time it's ended. Right. And, and I would also add for now, because they, they, yes. they've provided, they've ended it before and then provided additional found, uh, funding and it reopened. Um, and this is the program that Senator Padilla's bill would would seek to fund on a long-term basis. So that um, there may be, uh, this may be sticking around for even longer. We'll see. 
Okay. All right. And um, that is questions. all I have today, and I'm available for questions. Okay. Um, Michael um, Castro, you had a question. Mike Castro. So my question was on the customer service calls. Is there some sort of chart that indicates at the beginning of each month how many calls are in the queue, how many are taken during the month, and what the end number is at the end of the month? And further, that shows how many are in the queue for one month, two months, three months, so you can see what the progress is. Are there just some that sit there for five months unresolved or is everybody getting taken care of on uh, at a fast pace? So that's why I said I, I, I can figure out how people are doing when I can see the volume that's coming in, the pre-existing volume at the beginning of the month and the volume at the end of the month. I it would be helpful for me. I don't know if they have charts or anything that, that indicate um, how it's moving along. It was just my thought. You know, you realize that we're just now getting um, more, um, what is it, digital, um, more stuff like this to be able to do it. I mean, for the uh, last uh, years, everything's been done not digitally, so there's going to be a growing period, you know, a learning curve I and a, a time frame to get there. I figure so. there's a growing period, but yeah, they've been taking these calls for a long time, and even if it wasn't digital before, they should still be able to know what they started the month with, what they accumulated during the month, and what they resolved, and how many were left at the end of the month. It's to me, like we get that amount of calls for the month, and X amount were, um, you know, work orders done. I just somewhere don't, I don't see yeah. the numbers. That's what I said I see. Well, you couldn't see them from there. We could see them. Oh, there. if the if yeah. those numbers were there, I did not see them. Well, like not on a daily, but like in a summary. So in May of 23, we had what, 862 phone calls, 239 um, emails, and 163 work orders. Okay. So we've got totals there. It's just well, not like by the totals, day. But I didn't see how many work orders were still in the queue at the beginning of the month, oh, how many it was additionally order. joined, and what the resolve rate was with how many are left at the end of the month. Did it go up at the end of the month? Did it drop at the end of the month? Are they resolving them as quick as they're coming in? Are they resolving more of them? Or are they not resolving as many as are coming in? That, to me, that's valuable information yeah. to see how they're progressing. Is that something that you guys get notified on? Do you guys have it like sitting and open or just once it's made, it goes to Damon and Damien, Damon takes care of it probably? Well, so... We originate work orders in a couple of different ways. So when a work order is initiated in customer service because it's customer driven, um, we're able to track and see which ones were created for that month and which ones are still open. Now, I can say from our perspective, um, we maybe have one or two at the end of every month that is unresolved. Um, can and you track those easy enough in this? Well, absolutely. Or? Yeah, I can go in and see when they were originated and then when they were resolved and if we have any that are still open. Um, as far as calls, I can tell you our system is not able to track that. We, uh, When a customer calls in and our staff is trained to be able to resolve those calls within that first interaction. Not all the time obviously does that happen, but it would be really hard unless we're tracking that in some other way um, to determine how many calls are left uh, at the end of the month that maybe haven't been resolved. Some of those end up being escalations either to myself or other managers. So we would have to put some sort of tracking mechanism in place in order to do that. But um, but just doing the work orders might be something. Just work orders specifically? Yeah. yeah. So work even orders. if you just said we got 163 and we have one left, I mean, that would be a little bit of a help. Right. Well, I can certainly do that. And a, But a lot of times as far as, um, you know, any work orders that are unresolved, um, it typically has to do with either um, equipment that we're waiting on or a time schedule having to do with, you know, how whatever the, the repair or the work that needs to be done. And that goes through Pat and Damon's group. And so I don't want to overstep and report on. So maybe that should be a, a Damon operations. We had 162 work orders from the office and 
none of them are left over, or we have one waiting on equipment. I mean, that yeah, is something. I'll be able to give you all the information that we have from integration between the customer service software, the Tyler software, and mobile MMS when I give you my report. Uh, one thing to just bear in mind is that not all customer service work orders are going to translate oh, to right. a field service request. So, and we'll talk about that when, when I come up also, because we're all talking about customer service work orders now, but when we talk about them in operations, they're called service requests. So we don't want to get super oh, confusing gotcha. because it will get really confusing really fast. But we do have that information from the repair and operations side that we can that we can give you. Uh, and so that would be kind of in, in addition to what Kelly had already talked about from the customer service side. So we'll be able to show you that. Or see. Gotcha. Uh, Zach, does that okay. Kelly, I, I have one quick question. Um, if I'm a customer um, calling in, in in September reporting something that, that would result in a, a work order being submitted, um, do you do you ever tell the customer, uh, okay, I've submitted a work order and that work order for you know September, it's it would be a, a nine twenty four and maybe a, it's one eighty seven out of one eighty eight so that the customer knows if if they if if a month goes by and nothing has been done, they could call in and say, I, I'm calling about work order nine. 24 187. Right. So normally what will happen is if a customer calls in and let's say they're reporting, and this is a hypothetical situation, um, they're calling in and they're reporting um, maybe a standing water that they're seeing in the road in front of their home. Mm -hmm. um, logistically, where that's located, we will tie that request to that location. Um, and so if the customer calls back because maybe they're not seeing a resolution in the time frame that they were thinking they would see a resolution, we're able to pull it up on that customer's account or we go into our service order screen and we can see where it's where it is and what it's tied to. Just give us the road and we can pull it up. So if, if you can go into their account via the portal, is that a work order that the customer could see if they're signed up on the portal? No, that those work orders are all internal. I do know that there are some systems out there where if there's something reported, you would be able to see that, but I don't think our portal has that capability at this time. I just wanted to add that you, you kind of uh, com comprised in a nutshell a lot of what the relationship between customer service and operations is on a day-to-day -day basis because customer service will put information into a, a service request for operations that says, you know, the neighbor's really concerned about this issue, would like some information. And then our staff out in the field will respond in the work order, but they'll also talk via text and via phone call. And so there's always this real time conversation. Is it going, customer or customer service? Both, generally. Okay. It, it could be either or, it could be both. It just kind of depends. So we're also, we're, so not only on one side is customer service documenting kind of a correspondence and then the folks in the field are responding and it's all documented in a work order which is a challenge because you want people to be you want them to provide effective information but you also don't want them to be leo tolstoy so you kind of have to work on this hey i you didn't give me enough on this work order but you gave me too much on that work order and there's so this is all kind of the day-to-day -day operations centered around trying to provide effective customer services out in the field thank you I don't have any other questions for you. Thank you. Okay. That's a good report. Francisco, did you have something? Francisco Dela Cruz. Um, some of the things that you're mentioning uh, fall in the categories of some of the metrics that we've mentioned before. Uh, what Mike was asking for falls into mean time to repair. How long did it take? How many? How long was it taking to do things? Uh, so if you're already tracking it somehow, you're probably a lot further along and, and making progress and then is evident. But um, I had a question about my specific account that uh, I don't know if Kelly's had a chance to, to research it, but in my last bill, I had two weeks with zero usage on my consumption. And my question is, was that included in my bill or was I built something different? 
So I, you know, I don't know what's going on, but there was certainly people at our house during the time and we didn't change anything. And the, the chart shows zero usage. So I'm assuming you're looking into that, but wait, um, the other part that I'm, I'm I'm sort of confused by is this inability to find eligibility on the the low income or the um, I've been dealing with the county on in home support services and they have eligibility criteria and it's typically related to Medi-Cal and I'm 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 not sure if it's apples, oranges, or, or, or what the deal is. But there are a lot of services that the county does for in-home support services for folks that meet the income levels that, so I'm wondering if we'd mind that group of folks. Mm, that's a good. So it's a question. Note to take um, other, other, I think the county also, also offers ride programs. You know, hey, I, I can't drive anymore. Uh, I'm 82 and I don't have a license. Could you pick me up and take me to the doctor's appointments? I think they have eligibility. It may be just age. I don't know. But it seems to be that um, we should be able to find 90 people. Uh, but I, you know, I, I don't know. Just, just to respond to that real quickly, we I wouldn't say we finished mining anything yet. We're still looking into that one and we're we're that's a that's a work in progress. It's something we just became aware of recently. So we're we'll be bringing that back to finance committee. So Medi-Cal eligibility might be a, an option. In-home support services might be an option. Um, and yeah, but I don't know if Medi-Cal would work with you because of privacy laws or something, but maybe. Yeah, I, I don't know. That's an area that, yeah. you know, leaving to the professionals. Um, so. But I want to make a comment of what I heard you say, Francisco, to get on the record. You said, sounds like, you know, we're doing some of these metric um, tracking and that it sounds like we're making progress. You just don't see it evidently shown to you. So I take that as a compliment that staff is doing some step out there and making some Here's, maybe steps maybe in your mind. But I heard you say that they're making progress. So I like to say thank you. No problem. I mean, look, <laughs> I will acknowledge whatever I experience. I don't experience the kinds of questions that would be based on data based observations or data based trends or you know something that says we're measuring this we're tracking it and we have a question because it's now different than it was the last six months in a row what happened tell us about it i don't hear that going back in any of the operations meetings any of the engineering any of the meetings i've attended i haven't heard the kinds of things that say "Ooh, these folks talk data yeah. they talk trends they talk improvement yeah. they talk but you know, you know i think what has happened what is yeah i know but i think they do it within their groups because we do ccwd does do some good stuff so maybe you know trying to improve the communication here in the meetings might be helpful but it you know it would take some time but it does sound like they're doing a lot of the stuff to make these decisions it's just not transparent to folks here in the building yet or you know people like us but that's why we tried for the dashboard yes because well it's that's right. the quickest way to get it transparent if you already have it let's put it on a dashboard we can all agree on and it stops all that but forth. i i think we're getting there we're trying and um no doubt we're i'm just trying to make the decision if and eventually getting there it's when we get to these things and it's the same old thing and we don't we can't you know share with you what's being done then i think that's a, a problem but i i think the Look, goal is to be as helpful as we can to get it out there you asked earlier why don't we have more people showing up <laughs> i don't want to drive people to a place that i'm losing faith in you know, I thought we could collaborate and make some progress. You said you were welcoming of public input. I'm trying to give you an informed right. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to avoid the, the Steve Blackwood approach to get rid of all of them, fire them all, they're worthless, try, you know. That's not my approach at all. My approach is let's define the problem. What's the problem? Well, there's a lack of data. There's a lack of transparency. There's a lack of focusing on performance related measures. How do we get you there? 
if you're not going to go willingly and you're going to fight it all the way, I don't want to waste my time. It's and it. I don't want to yeah. recruit people to come and waste their time. Right. Okay? I think we're trying to get to that point. You know, I, I haven't given up. And believe me, I haven't been quite the. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? I haven't. I wasn't sure if I totally thought that, but. I think we're making some baby steps and we have stuff out there. We just got to figure out how to get it in the in the format that is helpful to the public, perhaps. And that's what we'll try and work on. I that's think. what we're here for. Right. Just to answer the first question, as far as your account is concerned, I hope you don't mind, but your account was included in some of the inquiry out to Tyler. OK, yes. <laughs> Um, well, I can be honest with you. Um, I have spent quite a bit of time with on the phone with Tyler and resolving a couple other things and my apologies for not reaching out. But And I don't know either. That's <laughs> I don't I don't have an answer for you. And I think that's why obviously we have this critical ticket in and we have this back and forth going on with Tyler right now because we we want to work to understand what is happening. weird that you raised a little flag somewhere you know that, well, that's what i was imagining well so again when we when we bill um we use the data out of centrix out of our raw billing system and we don't at this point have a tracking mechanism to say oh, okay so this account was showing this consumption in in this module but now in tyler it's showing this there's no cross-referencing at this time that is happening but just to clarify wouldn't that be the, like an not, exceptions report the, it was billed it was billed correctly that's, that's the point it was, it, was, billed it was billed correctly. It's just what's being displayed in the customer portal is is anomalous, right? So we're trying to figure out why that's occurring. But the billing itself, based on the raw data coming from your meter, is accurate. Right. So the disconnect is on the interface. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Right. So, but we are, we are, we're working on it. Yes. So hopefully here within the next I'm I'm hopeful by the end of the week I should have some sort of idea what's happening and then we can establish whatever that that resolution is to move forward. Uh Kelly Kelly G. Um I I just have a question for you. Would would you mind uh, just holding off for 5 minutes while we take a little break?
make sure that I can get out of here at 3.30. So. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. We'll move along. Yeah, okay, if we can reconvene our uh, activities here. Uh, Kelly G, could you come up and enlighten us, please? Well, I sure hope so. <laughs> good afternoon, Director Cicada, President Thomas. Afternoon. Hello, staff, Kelly. <laughs> I can't say your last name that well. Girl. Give it a I shot. Can. Just no, give it a shot. Kurt's a minor. No, that's wine. <laughs> can't even say that one. Kurt, so, I, I don't know what it is. On that note, one of my favorite things to do is when the UPS driver comes and they always ask you your name. I love saying Gerkensmeyer and just pausing because their look on their face when they realize they have to punch it into their little devices. <laughs> they usually just go with Kelly. <laughs> but it's that's right. something that I really yeah. enjoy to do. It makes, it makes it fun for me. So here we are. I'm going to start off today with some things I've been sharing, mostly through our social media, but mainly sharing from other agencies or just other programs, um, starting with World Water Day. World Water Day was on March 22nd. Um, I think it's a great thing. Raises awareness for the significance of freshwater resources. It's established in 1993, but that's something we pushed out and you know, it's a feel good. I mean, we're a water agency and I think it's a, it's a great thing. So when I push it out, I put links as well. So hopefully folks can follow it and see what the organization's all about. It's a leak. Yeah, last week was fix a week leak and that was pretty fun. So I try to push out some social media posts on that from you know DWR or Save Our Water. I think Save Our Water is something you guys should look into. It's a really, really nice um, organization. Um, the one I liked is on the left there I put out, it was, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the Saturday Night Live skit with the more cowbells, no. you know. Well, anyways, it's a pretty funny one. Yeah, I don't think so, but. But if you have a chance, check it out. It's, it's pretty okay. funny because, you know, the cowbell goes to the sign, uh, to the, I mean, the sound of a uh, dripping faucet. So um, on our survey, actually, there was a few comments about making some of our posts a little more fun. But. So. I wasn't sure Do about a cowbell in there once in a while. Yeah, <laughs> and I wasn't sure if it was appropriate to put something out that fun, but I took it to the PRT team, and we all agreed that hey, it's not a bad thing. Again, with Save Our Water, I think it's a really good organization. They have all sorts of information from, you know, what you can do around your household for fixing leaks. Um, really great plans for drought tolerant yards, and so I've been trying to push out things as I as I find and just share that but i do encourage anyone to take a look at that and i will be pushing a lot more of that out they really i think elevating their game and putting out some really good content and again they've got full schematics for drought tolerant yards and native plants and and things we, you can do to save water um last winter uh, when I was in water resources, it was, a, as we know, a pretty wild winter. I was pushing out a lot of material, snowpack. It was really fun to watch last year. This year, I found this UC Berkeley Central Sierra Snow Lab, and I've really been enjoying that. So I think they put out some a really unique product and just really good statistics. So the reason why I, I did this printout today, this follow with this presentation, I don't typically do presentations with so many words on it because I like the idea of presenting and not having everybody read the TV, but on the right there, those are just some of the posts. So those, those, I know it's small font. I don't expect you to read that font. Those are what's on our social media. So again, I'm always encouraging you guys to check out our social media and see what we what we're putting out. Well, you know, we're KQED posted California's normal winter and high snowpack could curb wildfire at risk. I wish they'd let uh, California Fair Plan know that. Yeah, I hear several people saying it's the California unfair plan. Yeah, not so fair. Yeah, but I, I do think it's interesting. I mean, I don't know if we've had a normal winter in a while or if we really yeah. know what a normal winter is anymore, but I certainly think this year has been a nice even keel. We, we're, yeah. we, we uh, met 100% of our water, of our snowpack for the year. And so without being bombarded with too much, last year was fun and exciting, but probably too much. So, and then, of course, we're a member of Mountain County's Water Resource Association. And just earlier in February, they they um, 
I shared this really cool article from the Tahoe Daily Tribune on their um what was that? They just adopted I just wrote it once. Forest management principles. Yes. Are you putting this on? Is this Facebook or? Yeah, I'll put it on this? Facebook. Okay. I'll put it on Twitter. Some, not everything goes. I don't. Mostly Facebook. I mean, that's that's what it, we. It's a Facebook yes. one that I'm looking at. Okay. Yeah, and so I'll post this and I'll share it, and then again, it also has the links to it, so you can link to that article. It's a really good article. I recommend you guys taking a look. I guess I should sign up to subscribe to your Facebook post. I really think you should. Yeah. I don't really do Facebook, but it would send me something saying you posted something, right? Right. Like text me or email me. Okay. Yeah. I'll try and get on that. On that. Yeah, and so this is some of the stuff that we've been posting on our own. This is right here. What you're seeing is everything from, I think all this is on Instagram, but that tank video that I showed in the last external oh, yeah. relations committee, a few days after I posted it and that, Lots of people seem to enjoy that. I, I think it was a, it's pretty interesting to see a, a, a tank be taken down and, and built up in, in a minute. I think it's pretty pretty cool. Are you able to track how many um, people look at it? I see where it says seven comments and 13 shares. I can. 34 thingies, so we can do that. Now that's on Facebook. It is on yeah. Facebook and you'll see that. I mean, I can see that doesn't show how many people really viewed it. I mean, that shows comments. It shows reactions like thumbs up. Um, all of our comments are always on there, so you can you can take a look. I mean, we don't we don't delete comments. Um, we leave them up there for people to consume how they wish. So you can go back and see everything we've posted for pretty much ever. So nice. it's, it might be valuable for you. Get some links. This was a little video I put out for the Jenny Lynn water treatment plant about a minute video. This was on our social media. I think it's pretty cool too. I tried to capture, I mean, of course you don't, you can't read those words because this was in the post, but basically I gave a little historical background of that treatment plant, you know, that it was basically built in 1967. CCWD took it over in 1970. You know, at that time it was a 1 million gallon per day plant. Um, and it, what, one thing I found when I was looking into it, I found that at that time there was 30 connections in Rancho Calaveras, which Blows my mind, but again, in 2008, it expanded to a what it is today. A uh, no, its current capacity is six million. I almost said five, but yeah, it was expanded to five at that time, and then its current capacity is six million gallons. And how many customers compared to 30? 13. Oh, good question. <laughs> I don't know the exact amount of customers in that area. 2800. Right, 30 and 2800. Like Damon to sit right here. But this one got a lot of good attention too. I mean, I think it wasn't over a specific project. It was just, hey, here's here's your treatment plant. Here's where you get your water, you know, in this in your community. So were you were you flying your drone around inside there? Is yes. Your... Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. And again, this will, you know, this is on our on our social media, so you can check it out later if you'd like. Nice. As you guys well know, last week we awarded the contract for the much anticipated A to B project. And so the day after that was official after the board meeting, I, I pushed out some social media on that as well. And this, I did, I did try to capture. Yeah. I had some of it already made and just, I'm pretty excited about this project. I feel like we've been talking about it for years and I think it's an important project and it's, it's nice that it's moving forward. And I wanted to get the community, you know, get out in front of the community, let them know. We, we got some really good feedback too through the comments on social media about just appreciating it and, and keeping everyone posted. So um, earlier today, we talked about doing a town hall for this project. And certainly throughout the project, I will be pushing out information as much as I can about impacts, where they will be, and just kind of progress. So what's the impressions count down the bottom left? This particular one that is on next door, that is how many Oh, next door. Yeah, this this one you're seeing there is next door. So yeah, it's nine thousand two hundred and ninety-two so, impressions. Essentially that's how many times folks have, have seen it. It could be doubles too. I mean okay. it could be multiple. But next next door has the really high numbers like that. Next door really reaches quite a few people. How, how many um you have to subscribe to this? Or if you're next door, subscribe to this area, you're gonna get your post. 
Okay. It so you don't it, really know how many. It depends. On this particular one, I did post this to all of our next door subscribers, so all of our areas. But some things I will just channel it to that neighborhood. Gotcha. So, for instance, I'm my personal next door is just for the neighborhood I live in. I won't see things for Valley Springs or other neighborhoods. So, so certain things like this. I mean, I, I could have chose to just post this for the Jenny Lynn area, but I. I thought, you know, this is a, a big deal. It's a big project. I kind of think it would be good to do it district wide just so they see everything that we have going on, you know, right. not just their area. Sometimes they could have that, you know, funnel to where, okay, we're looking mine. And then when they see something from another area, they go, wow. Right. You know, and, and we don't typically engage too much with the commenting back and forth on certain things. But yeah. when I posted this on Facebook, one person asked, you know, do we simply just pick the lowest bidder? And did we not look into the quality of work? And obviously that's not the case. And I explained to her and, and gave her a nice explanation. She was very appreciative of that. So, you know, sending her the link to the video meeting of all the discussion that took place probably wouldn't be a bad idea either. You know, Absolutely. on the open meeting, it's like that could maybe encourage them to. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. All of our meetings are on our website. We're, yeah. we're really always trying to push when we push out. For instance, this committee meeting, we're not pushing it to just this meeting. We're pushing it to the page right. where all of our meetings are. And again, I can't say enough about Rebecca with what she's doing with getting the, the videos on there very quickly. I mean, it's all archived. And I agree with you. What she's done with the minutes is. I know it's awesome. amazing because it takes you right to the area where the discussion took place. Yeah. Amazing. But I, I utilize that feature on our website quite a bit. I mean, I'm, I go on our website constantly to use it. I think many of our staff do it's it's a tool not just for our customers and yeah, the community it's really developing into that because it's a tool for us yeah and, and the last so it's all, year it's been amazing right the change you. it's all archived and so at any time you can go look back and look at those videos so the next one is essentially just a close-up of that if you guys were interested again i don't expect everyone to read that i'm just trying to illustrate what i'm pushing out again on the left there it's just a really brief overview of the project some of the issues and then some of the benefits and again trying to put out a map showing exactly where it is to give some context to it on the original post i did zoom in a little bit more which actually shows the streets so this map is nice <laughs> i kind of know where you're at now <laughs> yeah yeah again it not on this is a, is a more of a close-up. So somebody might be able to tell, oh, this is going to affect well, us. As I go front right there at 12 and 26, I was like, oh, that's what that is. There. Right. So that is some of the stuff that I pushed out recently. Um, some of the stuff that is coming up that I'm really excited about in, in April is we have the Bret Hart Union High School Career Fair on April 17th. They haven't had that fair in several years, so I'm looking forward to it. I don't know the exact number they're up to, but they have several other agencies and businesses throughout Calaveras County attending. So that's, I'm really looking forward to that. I think it's a great thing for Calaveras County to go and represent. And, and all of um, operation staff or any staff here that graduated from either Calaveras or Bret Hart work for us. Enormous amount. Yeah, quite a few. You should have some stop by or write a little what do you call it? testimony or something? I think I work here. Great place to work. Absolutely. And 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 with that, um, I don't think. Let me see if I have it in the presentation. It's like if I can do it, you can. <laughs> oh, I'll have to skip two here, but um, you know, and also, don't they have over in Sonora the uh, water wastewater um, program? Yeah. What's it called? Colum Columbia College. Yeah. No, I, I, there's. It, it's actually like in the old hospital, kind of just out of downtown Sonora. There's something about that. It's run through Columbia College. Is it? But make sure you have some of those cards here. Right. You know, do that and then come see us after you do that class or something. Yeah. And, and something um, that Kate Jesus and HR and myself have been working on is some flyers for these events. Good. Um, the one that you see on the left there is just a brief overview of the industry. Why, what are some of the benefits of getting into it? Down that lower left, on the lower right corner of that flyer, we're, we added links and QR codes. So as when we're there, those those links and QR codes are to the programs that can help you get your foot in the door and start learning. Can you email me this flyer? Because my neighbor was just asking me about some stuff. Absolutely. On water and wastewater, and I'm going to send him your flyer. Yeah. And, and, and when this 
presentation is on our website, you could technically just presentation you, on the website. Yeah, okay. Well, you could um scan that QR code and from the website. Okay, that's yeah. what I want. But I'll still send it to you. Yeah, and that way I'll just email it to him. Yeah, and then, the you know the, the QR codes work really well for you know the young savvy the kids. You know he, they they can just scan it really quick and then it'll take them to Sacramento State, the water program or the water board. It, it, it's funny that he reached out to me. He kind of does our dog sitting and stuff like that. But his dad is a very high level water manager over in the Bay Area. And I'm thinking, why don't you just ask your dad? But okay. <laughs> you know how Great sometimes family. you don't want to ask your parents. Yeah, yeah. You know, you... <laughs> yeah. What, what could they know? <laughs> so I'm going to jump like back because up. I just wanted to show you this, you know, some of the stuff. We're working on some other things too, similar to this, but we really want to encourage as we start doing these events and, and just helping our, our youth get into this industry. You know, I think it's a great industry to get into. And I mean, I got into it young, but I wish I would have gotten into it younger, you know, now reflecting. So. It's clever how you use those. Um, is it water tanks or the tertiary stuff? You know, to put your logo in there. Yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, that's not any of our facilities. Um, but I liked how our logo fit right in that. Actually, yeah. <laughs> so I, I went with it. So. Yeah. so jumping back, we also have the on the right track that we're going to be doing in April as well. We have one on the 11th at Bret Hart and one on April 18th at Calaveras High School. Uh, we attended this last year, and I briefly reported on this, I think, in one of the last few meetings. However, yeah. it's on, it's upon us again, and I think it's a really great program, okay. too. I'm not sure. Again, they they, uh, they had some curveballs for us last year. I wasn't sure what to expect, and they give them certain scenarios, and I don't know what the scenarios are, or at least last year I didn't know until that day, but they basically give the kids scenarios where they're buying a house or they're starting a commercial business and they need to get sewer connections. Or oh. And I was so thankful on that first day that I had Kate Jesus, who was an exactly. engineer who knew all the stuff. And on the second one, I had Kate Darby, who knew all the stuff about, you know, from the customer service perspective too. So it was, it, it helped me because I wasn't, I didn't know those were the questions right. that you were going to ask. But True, yeah. But now you know. I'm ready for this year. Yeah. You should have some applications for them to fill out in case they do it again or something. <laughs> Last year, we brought job descriptions. We brought, we brought material like that. So some, some kids took it, some kids didn't. But I mean, application to apply for water service, you know? Oh, here you go. Fill that no, out. Well, we took out mock, <laughs> we took mock ones to show yeah. them what it would look like. Yes, right. we did. We are currently working on our high school scholarship program again right now. We have 22 seniors, local seniors from the high schools that submitted scholarships. We're going to pick four. We're going to do, I'm going to do two from Bret Hart, two from Calaveras, and it's a $500 scholarship that we we partner with East Bay Mud and East Bay Mud matches us on that. So the board doesn't get to pick them. We usually provide recommendations to the board. It's curious. I mean, you guys could probably figure it out better, but you know. Well, we're, yeah, right now I'm working with the PRT. We, we've got them and we're going to narrow them down to the top three to five and then and then go from there. So here's one of those slides with lots and lots of words that I was referencing, so I'm certainly not going to read through them all, but the Upper McCallamy River Watershed Authority, we've been working with them lately on a few letters of support for some of the projects that they're doing, and just a, a great organization that we're really proud to be partnering with. Um, usually when Richard Sykes reaches out to us with a, with a project, we yeah. really don't hesitate, and we right. these are great projects. map of this this is more meant again for you guys to consume later on if you want to look more into the, the, the exacts of the project mainly today i just wanted to illustrate what ccwd is doing to you know support these other organizations in their endeavors course management is important so in the earlier in the fall i had a chance to go see this project that they're referencing and they had this they call it a, I think they call it a manless masticator or the remote control. Yeah, yeah. which it still takes a guy to operate it. So I think right. we work on the name, but this thing was amazing. And it was just what it could do was, 
I, it was just blew all of our minds. I, I think they said it replaces about 12 to 15 hand crews doing all that. And if work. it rolls over, it usually doesn't take anybody with them. There's yeah. a name for them, right? Something bot. Well, that's right. Yeah, this this particular one, I'm going to show that too. It's it's Burnbot. Burn it's this it's Thank this company out of Silicon Valley that produces these. I mean, they're 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 made overseas. I'm not sure exactly where, but this thing is amazing. And they were even saying that you know the the footprint of it and what it the hills that it can get on is is actually like the, the environmental regulations haven't caught up with what this thing can do. Right. You know, there's certain regulations where you're not allowed to be on a certain slope for for issues. You know, do you know where Calaveras Timber Trails is? Yeah. Okay. So I worked there and we had this guy come in and always do the outside the perimeter of the of the resort or whatever it's called. It's amazing. Yeah. So bear I, was, and stuff. I was very impressed. And in the next video, I have a real quick video clip, about two minutes of just what they're doing. And it's actually at this particular project that we got to go visit. So don't know if I can hit play on this remote. I'm up here today with our forestry division on the Amador Ranger District on the El Dorado National Forest, working with the Upper McCallumy River Watershed Authority, the U.S. Forest Service, and CAL FIRE on a 2,600 acre forestry project. And what we're doing is we're basically creating a fuel break along the ridge line here. What this can do is A, promote healthy forests, and B, create a fuel break in the unfortunate case of a wildfire we have a containment line ready and prepped. So many people know BurnBot for our flagship black lining and prescribed fire system. However, there's much more to our capabilities than that. For example, up here on our forestry division, we're running a number of different machines. We have the PrimeTech PT300s. Those are incredibly efficient at grinding large areas, smaller diameter trees, and gaining ground through lighter fuels. We also have excavators which are particularly valuable in removing trees that are larger, hung up trees and dense areas, including stumps. And then we have our smaller masticators, both the dedicated masticators and LV-800s that are good at tight areas. Everything out here, every tool serves its purpose and that enables us to treat these acres at scale. If you look behind me, there's some treated area right here on my right. And then on my left, you can see what it looked like before. Notice the variability in fuels. That's why we have our variety of tools and a vertically integrated forestry division. You know, at BurnBot, we believe that the best suppression tactic is a overzealous mitigation tactic. So the more time we spend in the fringe seasons and during the winter doing work like this, the healthier our forests are gonna be, the better we're gonna have at catching fires when they're small and preventing them from becoming the catastrophic mega fires that have plagued us the last few years. You have that on our website too? No, but I could. Yeah, that's very interesting. And, and one thing I want to know, you know, say as well, especially after you said it too, how fortunate we are to have Mr. John Coleman here. And I want to note that he is one of the founding members of UMRA, which was established in 2000, along with our own very own Jeff Davidson and Terry Woodrow from Alpine County. So, again, that that organization I think is just fantastic and really we're really grateful to be partners with them and that is it can you Francisco can you come to the mic please that way everybody online can hear Francisco de la Cruz um Cal Fire and the Calaveras County Resource Conservation District and other special districts such as yourselves just announced a new project in our neighborhood. Uh, my particular parcel is within the 3,200 acres that they're going to treat, but um, they're going to do a fuel reduction project 
of about 470 acres. And there are a number of areas that they're not treating that I would like to, uh, for the neighborhood, get the equipment that you've highlighted there because we're on slopes. Uh, and I've already hired a guy that has one of those things, but he made his own masticator with the, the track vehicles and all that. This is a little more uh, involved. And I just want contacts. So if there's a way that there's contacts, so I can start making contracts for the areas that the state is going to treat. That'd be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, when when we went to that, I, I do believe I had the gentleman that was on camera there. I have his card, but again, it's it's burn bot. Yeah, no, it's not burn bot. Yeah, it's, we're looking at the remote. That's that's the same one. It's it's their organization. It's their company. They got several different types of machines. Great, thank you. Yeah. And then at the last meeting, we talked about the website. And so we have that on the agenda at tomorrow's meeting to I'm, uh, discuss approval. Yes, I'm very excited about that. Yeah. Um, I've, I've been speaking with Jacob from Streamline, and I think I think it was a good idea to have it on tomorrow's meeting so we can get the attention it deserves. I, I strongly feel that you know this our website is 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 a hub for us, not only for our customers, but for the community for our own staff as well. And I, I think tomorrow you guys are gonna see that and see what value that this will bring. I think I think if, if we implement it, I think it'll be a lot of work at first, you know, getting it going, but I, I think it's gonna be worth it in the long run. And I, I just, I'm really excited about it. So looking forward to well, tomorrow. You both have been doing a good job with maintaining it and having specific, you know, people to do that is really helpful. It was one person made it a little difficult, but now you can see how well worth I think that the website is. It's improved a lot just the last year. So thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Not for now. Thank you. Okay. Um Michael, it says that you're up for performance tracking, but I see uh, Damon's coming up. Is he? Come on, Damon. Damon, you're ready to go. Chris, I think at the last yeah. meeting we asked him to bring back, you know, even if it was just one, any item that he's already tracking that. Thanks, sir. Is this somebody looking for a leak out there? Or? <laughs> Jack, Jack. Oh. What's the difference between the service? Okay, so order? what we shared on the screen is what I just oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. what I just Finished. handed out to everybody here, and this is kind of um, uh, hats off to the folks at uh, WebSoft Developers MMS who have basically created a dashboard for for our work order system. And so this is kind of to dive right into the conversation that y'all were touching upon earlier with Kelly Richards about customer service work orders and operations and how those two integrate uh in a documented sense so are we looking at the live version right now you are so numbers yep. don't match so <laughs> yeah so, th so this is this is live right it's going to change so you okay. guys are going to see some subtle changes happen this was printed three hours ago right yeah Got exactly it. right so this is just updated automatically <laughs> so it's it's a you could call it i guess a passive dashboard where the the operation of the work order system informs this dashboard so can i quickly ask service request versus work orders what's the difference yep i'm going to jump uh, that's where i'm actually going to start thank you very much director Skata. so service requests are uh, essentially work orders that have been issued from the customer service department okay. to operations um and then you also have uh work orders and work orders are general generally created by staff in operations so I, if I'm going to make a work order or, or a service request, generally I'm going to make a work order. So service requests allow us to really kind of understand what customer service information is being asked of operations, and then work orders allow us to understand what 
um, kind of interrelated departmental work orders are being created through departments. So did a treatment plan operator create a work order for a mechanic? You're going to find that in work orders. And did a customer service rep create a work order for a distribution operator? You're going to find that in service requests. So uh, when you, as you kind of look at the screen, just to orient you a little bit, you'll see the number of active service requests in the month. And then right below that, you see a little graph that's the number of active versus the number of closed. So you can see that currently there's seven active, 31 closed. And then right next to that, you're gonna see work orders. And work orders open uh, that are currently still open are 19. And then below that are 19 on the screen. You guys that have the handout are gonna see something a little different. Um, you're gonna see open work orders versus closed work orders. And so let's kind of start with service requests, if you can bear with me here. <clears throat> so if you turn to page two, and I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, also kind of make a change here. Actually, sorry, go back to page one real quick. <laughs> so, so down below the the tab of active service requests and active work orders, you have a, a couple different options for bar graphs. And the first one you have are service requests by month. And you see those are, are listed by type. So you see TY check leak. So that's Tyler. A Tyler work order came through for a field member to check a check for a leak. And so at a glance, you can see through these different categories, you've got check meter function, disconnect, miscellaneous, um, occupant change, uh, or sewer issue. You, you see check for leak is in or it's way higher than anything else, right? So we have a lot of leaks out there. And this is kind of the common theme of our work order system. There's a ton of different categories within the service request. Uh, customer service staff have a lot of options. They can, you know, there's box flooded. You can check pressure. Uh, you have dirty water complaints or taste and odor complaints. There's a whole myriad of different things that you can ask somebody out in the field to go take a look at. Um, when you have miscellaneous, uh, generally it's going to be, you know, we need to know, we need to confirm a meter ID or we need to confirm a read. Or, um, you know, there, there might have been an on-call work order that happened after hours or over the weekend and customer service staff would like somebody to go out and confirm everything was done as described. So these are kind of what you see under miscellaneous. So, so just really kind of to recap, you've got the active service requests living on top of a, a bar graph or a pie chart of active versus closed over the month. And then you next to it, you have work orders over the month. And then down below, you have that first tab, which is service requests by month. And now if you if you turn to page number two and we click that middle bar tab, you got service requests by category this year. And that's what's really telling. You've got you know instructions, you've got 70 check for leaks versus six check meter functions versus a one check pressure. So you can kind of just really see at a glance from service requests the majority of what our staff are being asked to do are check for leaks. You can really drill down to what you're doing. That's cool. Right. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And so um so uh oh no um, do 10. <laughs> yeah. So uh you can see that uh just really kind of right out of the gate uh our distribution crews are really kind of fighting a, a battle every day out in the field uh, to fix service line leaks. Uh, if you move to page three, we're going to just click that next tab right next to service category, uh, service requests by year. And this is leak check by month. So this is going to get in. Uh, it's going to become better informed as the year goes on. Right. And we're going to be able to understand. I think Kelly uh, Gertensmeyer inherently knows that generally when it's wet outside, we get less calls for people right. that leaks less. Right. So we can anticipate right this summer that this number is going to increase as we get into this dry summer months. And people are going to notice leaks and they're going to call in leaks. But we can at a glance look at leak checks by month here with this tab. Um, so I want to kind of draw your attention now to the map. So if we if we just reflect on service requests real quick, we have total service requests by month. We have service You're on requests. page one or three. Uh, what's that? What page are you on, Mr. Uh, I'm I'm just I'm gonna Stand go three. to three four. Four, okay. But I was trying to trying to give you a little bit of a build up, but I think four is, will be telling if you just look okay. at the map. So if you just okay. look at the map, you know, first first right at a glance, we have what's called the overview page on page three. 
And you can see right there in that white bar below the map of Calaveras County that says overview. And you can see these blue uh, GIS layers that show Jenny Lynn distribution system, West Point distribution system, Copper Cove. And uh, up here on the screen, I can actually move that around and I can zoom in and, and look at it in detail. And as it loads, it'll show me information. But I can also go to this little tab here on the, right here on this uh, on the right of the screen at the overview tab, and I can click that and I can go to what's what the heat map is. So the heat map is going to display the service requests uh, issued by service area historically over time. And so as you zoom in on uh, the Rancho Calaveras service area, you can really see that yellow hot, super white hot, uh, those areas where. Um, service requests are just coming in like, you know, like we're printing money. I mean, we have a lot of work out there. And so I think this, when you when you consider an, a project like the A to B transmission pipeline, the objective is to see a reduction in the overall heat map. Um, so one thing that as you start to dive in, as you better understand the information, you know, you can anticipate a question of, well, let's take a look at the heat map year over year and let's look at improvements. And we haven't done that yet, but that's something we definitely consider as you take in. Because like, you know, we were talking, uh, I was talking to folks earlier uh, during the break, because there's there's a historic amount of work orders and service requests contained in MMS. So you can look at information from a historic perspective like this and say, OK, you know, we have X amount of um service requests on a heat map, but we can also start to think about what it will look like as we as we deploy the utility crew location over location. How is that heat map going to change and what's what's it going to look like as time moves on? And so uh, the next few pages in your handout and on the screen, I'm just going to tab over. It's just really showing the different heat maps for each service area. So the next one I tab over is West Point and you can see a lot of the work in West Point is service requests right in downtown area. And I would venture to guess, I haven't looked at it in detail, but these would mostly be, be related to the collection system. We have a lot of issues in downtown West Point with, with sewer collections. And so moving forward up on uh, Ebbets Pass, you can see uh, some, some yellow areas uh, really up in Big Trees Village, which is where we have a lot of common trench with, uh, so we have water service lines that live in the same trench as uh, telecom and electric power just like we do down in poker flat which is problematic for us and then we move over to uh copper cove i'm mo moving kind of quickly apologies i think i'm on page seven or eight now of the handout but i'm looking at copper and i just want to kind of show that you know you do have some some blotches of red on the heat map here but when you really look at that yellow that's poker flat and so that's kind of where our uh utility crew is working right now to replace service lines uh, the Poker Flat HOA, as Director Thomas and Michael know, um, they they were the catalyst to the formation of the utility crew. Um, they have been very gracious to our guys because we are in in their business in every which way because it's a the streets are tight and it's difficult because we are in common trench with PG&E and so we have to really work slowly in order to ensure that we work safely. Uh, so you, uh, once again, at a glance review of service requests issued uh, via heat map is an effective way to kind of get an understanding of, of what our folks are doing out in the field. And now uh, one more tab over, and if you guys turn the page, you're going to see USA tickets in a graph uh, by group. And so uh, I don't know if we talk about USAs enough, but uh, oh, yeah. we have an amazing amount of USAs that come in for underground utility work that require us to mark our utilities. Um, and we use the same crews that fix the leaks to uh, locate the underground utilities with the exception of our electric crew, our electrical team will work on some of those underground service alerts. But this will give you an idea of how much work USAs take up for our crew. And so we have Ebbets Pass this year alone, 410 USAs and Jenny Lynn distribution 316. And this is an, an, an yeah. acknowledgement that PG&E is working to underground a lot of the electric infrastructure or they're looking to treat holes just below the soil surface. And so um, oftentimes these are, uh, you know, and rightly so, we're in a high, high hazard fire severity zone. These folks want their uh, requests 
um, responded to now, and they want they want this. They they've got a crew on the ground, and so oftentimes the ask for our guys is they stop and drop and do whatever is requested. So it does get a little tough, and I just want to you know take my hat off to our crews for um, completing the work because it's not easy. So, Damon, so, yeah. how, how do you get these notices? Um, we used to get them via email. Is that the same thing? And don't you have duplicates? Is there some way to tell you that we've already been there to track that? That's true. And and yes. And so I don't know exactly about how the software works, but sh but mobile MMS is able to grab those emails and incorporate them into uh, work orders yes, yeah. through this USA ticketing process. And our guys are are able to aggregately uh, tab and check boxes for for remarks, what we call, mm -hmm. and respond immediately. So there, those are definitely going to be contained in here. So it's not all, you know, the Ebbets Pass distribution doesn't have 410 immediate site visits, but the vast majority are immediate site visits. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's USAs. So we're on the same dashboard. We've really just tabbed over a few different things. And now if if you'll bear with me, we can dive into the kind of the work you orders. Know, and one other thing with the yeah. USAs, um, we don't get paid for doing those. That's correct. We have to pay a membership to get the notice. And if we don't go mark something sure. and then something happens and they break our water pipe and we didn't go mark it, oh, well, it's on us. If That's we right. mark it, and they break it, they repair it. So that's right. Very important service, but unfortunately, we don't get paid for it. That's exactly. So, you know, staff time and what takes a lot of staff time. It does, especially. Yes, but really to them, I mean, it, it, it's a break even. But I guess what I'm trying to say is they have to stop what they're doing, get pulled off another job, and yeah. go do this. Yep. And when all that tree work was going on, that's right. That was so common for doubles and triples, and then they would not get out there right away and have that's to right. ask for another one, a remark. It, well, no. and and so it's kind of gaming of the system is something we see a lot of. You'll yeah. get 80 of these issued in one night, yeah, and they won't show up for a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. There was like a 1,000 in one day. Right, yeah. And so we've had, there's there's a good group. Uh, USA North has a really good board that that has listened to the concerns of utilities yeah. like us to so we're starting to see some changes. I think people are, are being better uh, teammates, if you will, out there in the utility world. Um, but still, it does create a lot of work for our staff. Yeah. And you have to have a mark by what time frame? Uh, it's usually 48 hours. Yeah. yeah. So when you have a thousand that all have to be done, how do you do that? Right. So that's where I think USA North, you guys yeah. started talking with them and they, yeah. you know, because if we don't get it done and they hit it, then we're. And we have staff that are on the Western States USA board, so they're able to really kind of oh, work good. closely with 811, yeah, USA North, and and really kind of affect change. Yeah. Um, and it's allowed us to get into pre-construction meetings with PG&E uh, ahead of their projects um, because we see, you know, a, a, a large slate of USAs issued, and we are able to contact project managers and say, well, time out, you know, yeah. you, you, what are you guys up to? We need to be at the table. And so um, it, we're getting better. Everybody's getting better at this, yeah. but it's still a massive amount of work for our field guys. Uh, so if you take a look below that, uh, you'll see uh, hopefully on the page that you're on, you have a bunch of green bar charts, uh, closed work orders. Mm -hmm. And you can see below that is uh, crew names. So you have work orders this year by crew. And so you have administrative work orders. So, um, or in collections crew work orders. Uh, you have construction, uh, distribution, work orders, facilities, maintenance, IT, um, and then the mechanics. So a lot of what you're going to see with mechanics and collections crew members are preventative maintenance work orders. So they, uh, these are going to be generator checks and lift station cleaning and inspection and checks a lot of the time. So if we tab over, um, you know, it should refine that a little bit. Um, oh, this is going to be open work orders this month by crew. So you can see um, uh, there are a few open work orders. The mechanics generally have some on the docket because they haven't gotten to the generator uh, to make a check or they're going to leave it open while they're working on X piece of equipment and, until they get Y part and then they can they can fix that. Um, and then uh, if you tab over again, you can see work orders by type. So there's a cost to serve. So this is in order, you know, uh, construction crew member or distribution crew member working to understand what a 
service line install would cost for a customer. So generally engineering would request that from operations. You can see emergency repairs. So these are unanticipated repairs independent of customer service that our folks have identified. And this could vary. This could be a proactive distribution operator who finds a service line and repairs it and completes and closes the work order all in one fell swoop. Or this could be a water main break that, and I issued a work order or a sewer line issue. There's a kind of be kind of a, a variability within that uh, emergency repair tab. You have inspection, uh, leak repair, PM. Uh, so you can see there's a fair amount of PM and a fair amount of repair. And so there's going to be a lot of things contained in that repair as well. Uh, scheduled maintenance. This is usually the collections crew uh, through our sanitary sewer management program. We're able to document preventative maintenance and we can uh, roll those work orders. Uh, a sanitary sewer management program is a living document for our collection system that provides the state with an understanding of how effectively we operate it. And so when we create PMs and we um, routinely track work associated with that in the work order system, it helps bolster. Um, the state's uh, consideration of the reliability of our SSMP. So that's really important. Um, so here you are, the dashboard at a glance. Uh, we don't have, uh, you know, uh, a metric on when the work order was issued versus when it was closed or when the service request was issued versus when it was closed, because a lot of time, as you can see, by taking a look at the heat maps and taking a look at the service requests by month, um, that Oftentimes we have so many checks for leaks that uh, priorities change it at a, in, a, in an instant. So we might have a work order that was issued yesterday and staff went out there and said, oh yeah, this is a leak. We're going to have to repair that tomorrow. And then when they get to work the next morning, there's a work order that's like, oh, we got to repair this right now. So the, is from the time of issuance to closure is, is going to give you, at this point in time, I think we, we can anticipate, we can all envision there's going to be a period in time where that's going to be an important metric to understand but right now we have so much work that we're just trying to accomplish that we have to almost operate in a triage type fashion so there's going to be work orders and service requests that are left open longer than you would anticipate but you have a plan yes yep well i think that's wonderful thank you yeah I th it, yeah. yeah yeah thank you Uh, I just have one question for Damon. Uh, when you have a project like that uh, 20,000 feet of uh, transmission line AB, a, it, it's going to take 50 cases of paint to, to paint four miles of, of utilities, isn't it? I mean, yeah, so I think what the point that I take from your comment is we really need to understand how operation staff are going to be able to provide support to this project because it's going to take up a lot of operational time. Yeah. Um, and we've we've experienced this on the pass on some pipeline projects as well. So I think when we consider the project, we really need to think about how it's going to impact that. But yes, absolutely. From a USA perspective, I mean, it's going to be right. And who's, you know, if that crew in particular spends the majority of their day fixing leaks and so um and they can fix leaks right next to the utility crew which they will this summer there'll be two crews working in the same service area fixing leaks while a major construction project is underway and so if we draw somebody away from that distribution crew we, we're going to need to figure out how to backfill that and we've talked about that internally i mean we do have some obviously we have talented staff all over the service area so we're going to be able to kind of be creative about how we do that but it's going to be challenging. It's a good well, point. The, the construction support that's required to requires you know, we need those guys, right, who know that system better than anybody else. I mean, Reach One is a good example of Kelly up on the pass was pulled off of his day to day job on a regular basis to support the construction activities, and at times, you know, respond immediately to situations that were caused by the construction that only somebody that is you know very closely familiar with that distribution system could do you know it's not yeah. something you could just contract out or you could but it's not going to get done as well or as quickly and could potentially damage other infrastructure so it's just a mm. it's going to be a very difficult uh, time for that crew that is already under a lot of pressure yeah 
Um, but then, yeah, to your point, the marking is all is a whole different issue. I would just add to the presentation too that this is, you know, what we're seeing here is a relatively new iteration of of um, this information. But we have in the past had, you know, it wasn't as as sophisticated or as as um, comprehensive as this. But it is part of the decision making process when it get when it comes to you know, where do we prioritize resources in, in addressing um, in addressing leaks and addressing infrastructure issues? That's that that predated this. This specific tool, it's just been different iterations of that. How long have you um, had this um, tool available? We've How long had, have you been using it? We've had mobile MMS, uh, I want to say since 2019. Okay. <clears throat> Yes. One day, uh, late 2019. Yeah, late 2019. Last month, I, I saw a, a group of people in here and then they went out, outside. Was that uh, orientation or training on this? It was. So one of the challenges that we um, experienced through MMS is the accuracy of our maps. And so last year uh, we purchased, we got an interesting name, but they're geolocating GIS device called a Bad Elf. And the bad elf device can, um, per, uh, yeah, it real time uploads information into MMS. So, so if our guys go out in the field and they see, oh wait, no, the fire hydrant on the map says it's on this side of the road. It's actually on that side of the road. They can make, they can open a work order for WebSoft developers, the company that operates and creates MMS, to move that to the map and geolocate it with the bad elf and like. Francisco is saying, you know, put it exactly where it lives within centimeters um, out in the field. And so they were training, receiving training on that. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, it seems like a great program to have for sure. It's really powerful. It's very powerful. Hey, did you have a question? <clears throat> Francisco de la Cruz. Um, I don't know how to say kudos uh, and congratulations and thank you. Uh, because this is what we've been talking about in our, you know, how do we get the kind of operational data that helps us make good decisions? Now, this is considerably more granular and more complex than I would ever recommend that you push out to the public. It's heartening and it's reassuring that you have it at your disposal to make the important decisions. What we would do is identify those key focus items or key target items that have the most direct relationship to raising rates or lowering rates or increasing effectiveness or increasing efficiencies or making things better from the perspective of the ratepayer. You all have different objectives to make things better, i.e. you have workloads to manage, you have employee morale to manage, you have you know, just fatigue to manage, and you have to balance all of those things. But if we can come together on the things that directly affect or most directly affect the raise or the rise of the rates or the reduction of cost to operate this place, then we're going to be a real happy bunch of people. And I want to thank you and your team for this. This exceeded my expectations. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, that was thank awesome. You. It is awesome. Thank you. Thanks. The Kelly is yours is good too. This dashboard's really good. <laughs> Appreciate it. The, the heat maps are <laughs> they're very hot, aren't they? That's scary. But now you can see how they've been making their decisions. They've had this knowledge for a long time. It just wasn't. Yeah. So here we go. Awesome. Okay, getting back on track here, speaking of tracking. Um, Michael, it says here that you are gonna Give us some comments. Well, actually, can I go back to the performance tracking from the last meeting? I asked you if you had any questions and you said. I didn't have any questions for Damon, okay. but we're not done with performance tracking because that kind of put a lot of things in together. And one of them, we were talking about the strategic plan. Is there any movement we want to do more on that? Um, or are we just going to. You know, what else are we going to do for performance tracking? Anything? Yeah, any so I think Kelly presented some. Um, a, a, a tool that we can use for that. We're also working, as I mentioned in our last meeting, on a team internally um, to revisit uh, kind of 
reevaluate the strategic plan and then also kind of give us a, a check in on how we're doing um, at this point. I also have gone back and found some of the SWOT analysis that was done oh, yeah. at the beginning. So I'll share some of that information. Um, and I think that we might want to share um, just we could email out the link to the, that special board meeting that was held back then when we presented this information, the SWAT information. Um, if you're interested in seeing the discussion that took place, shall, back then. shall we maybe on the next external relations meeting have an item on the strategic plan that we can go over that stuff then? I know you've got to leave at 3 30. The Is that next, we can do? Yeah, we don't need to do it right now. More. I don't. I mean, it might, it, we could do it at the next external relations meeting. It might be better to give our internal team a little bit more time to dive into that. And if, if we want to, or we could just do a check in and then report back to I, the team. Uh, let's do a check in with those items that you came up with. And I just want to see that this committee, we, we continue to make progress, even though it's maybe little baby steps, but at least we're trying to get somewhere where that is. I'm not certain if we all know, but um, I think reviewing the strategic plan is important. And if we add that as part of a line item, the dashboard that uh, that Damon did is amazing. Updates that staff does is good, but is it time to go a little bit more, go back to the strategic plan? And then after we work through that, maybe we'll have a full staff in accounting. We could start looking at some other kind of metrics for the accounting side. Um, you know, in a couple of meetings from now or something. Yeah, we can agendize a strategic plan check in at the next. And you'll have um, internal staff work on it and we can. We can I mean, yeah, they, they won't be done by then, but we can certainly check in and have that. Yeah, have that discussion. And we could start somewhere because, you know, I envision, yeah. you know, OK, let's pull out one item and we'll, whatever. We can talk about that then. Okay, um, Francisco, please. I might recommend that we start seriously making some progress on a an overall customer satisfaction survey that you can use to start laying some groundwork and benchmarking so that you can say, we started in March or April or May and we have now done it for eight months, or 10 months, and we're seeing movement. And uh, right now, <clears throat> I don't know of, of uh, other surveys other than the one that Kelly has done that touches directly the customer every time that they put in a call or a service request or whatever, that they get sent something. And it, it might be a simple three question. Are you overall satisfied? Did we do everything the way you expected? Do you have any issues to, you know, something really, really simple that just lay down a track record? Because right now, Everybody's opinion is we're doing great. See, and I agree with we should have some kind of a survey um, program. Either we bring it back next meeting or give them a little bit of direction to bring back something. But I think the survey is important for us to be able to hear from the customer. It sounds like we have some um, good options on how to get it out there. But, you know, are they happy with the communications? Um, I, I don't know those questions. Could you want to try and come up with some of those or does Kelly want to work on some of those? But a customer satisfaction survey, you know, how many questions? Five, you know, and something like that. Kelly, would you like us to try and come up with the questions? We've, we've done some of that already, but we can report back on on the next step on that. On can that you work. tell me what those questions were on that last customer satisfaction survey? We have not done a customer satisfaction. Yeah, that's the We've one done, that I think we're yeah. looking for. We're you know, what do you think like a overall performance of CCWD is? You know, what do you think we do good? What do you think we need improvement on? Um, what, I, what I heard Francisco say is that when somebody uh, makes a, an initial call, that they would, we would respond to that call by saying, in this particular instance, were your questions answered? Not I, I don't think there's time for an overall uh, okay. uh, global asking the question is CCWD doing a good job. That, that so can at the next meeting then let's do um two new items one or a standing item for strategic plan, I think, or at least a new item and then surveys and let's at the next meeting come up with a survey 
Um, I like, you know, your suggestion, just do the one, you know, it, when you did a work order, whatever it was, you know, were you, mm -hmm. anyhow, so we don't have time to develop it today, but at the next meeting, if we could have that on the agenda to develop. Well, I, I, I can give you a very uh, recent, as recently as today, yesterday we got a washer delivered from Lowe's. And before the guy got out of the driveway, it popped up on my mm. my uh, cell phone. You know, you just had a washer delivered. How, how did things go? Did you yeah. like the did the, the, the work get done to your satisfaction? You know, do you have any suggestions? That that's that's the kind of it was very impressive. That that would work nice. And that's something, Kelly, you could put together. Is that do we have the system for that yet? Well, we can. <laughs> why don't we report back on that at the next meeting? So we're going to wait another four weeks, just, but okay. Just call Lowe's. They can tell you how to do it. So, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, do you have any other comments, Director Cicado? Uh, the strategic plan and the survey for how was your work order? I, I just say thanks because I think everybody did a really good job with um, presenting today. And I think it was good information. Okay. Um, uh, likewise, I, I'm always am appreciative when our staff comes through with good good reports. What what did one, one more thing? Twenty third. That's not that. Thank you. All right, uh, if there's nothing else, then um, I will bid you adieu. Well, we didn't hear from Michael, though. Yeah, we, we have okay. a meeting tomorrow. I'll report yeah. out. Yeah. I thought we did. All right. Actually, I thought that was a good meeting. Okay. <laughs>